The Reno family moved to Rockford, Indiana, in 1813, where the brothers, Frank, John, Sim, Bill, and another son and daughter, were raised in a strict Methodist household. They were required to read the Bible intensively, although most of the brothers would rather look for trouble than listening to Bible stuff every day. Turns out they found finding trouble easier than finding Jesus. They started out stealing from travelers in crooked card games. The brothers were also suspected of starting several fires and linked to the disappearance or theft of one horse. The village folks were getting pissed and the family got cancelled to another state. After a few years, the family returned to Indiana, just to find the same village folks being the same amount of piss. <laughs> Luckily for the brothers, the Civil War broke out, and they escaped the town by enlisting in the army. During the war, Frank, John and Sim became bounty jumpers. They would be paid to enlist, desert and enlist somewhere else under a false name. Not a lot of patriotism and honour among thieves, I guess. But what else is new? After the war, the brothers returned to robbing travelers and merchants. They expanded their activities to other counties, and new outlaws joined the gang. Slowly, the infamous Reno Brotherhood gang was formed. At this point, the brothers were beginning to make plans for their first train robbery. On the evening of October the 6th, 1866, John, Sim, and another gang member boarded a train, leaving the train hub at Seymour Depot. A few points to add there. No, they did not chase the train on horseback at 50 miles per hour, because one, that's Hollywood, two, that's impractical as fuck, three, it's a fucking train, it stops. Why would you bother chasing a train on horseback if you can just get on at the nearest station? You're welcome. So, after the brothers boarded the train in a very boring way, they moved to the express car for their first piece of appropriate Hollywood action. They attacked a guard in the express car and restrained him. They broke open a small safe containing around $16,000. Soon after, a second larger safe was found, but the men were unable to open it. They came up with an ingenious plan to throw the larger safe out of the moving train. The ingenious part of the plan became less ingenious after the rest of the gang found the safe next to the tracks still closed. The gang fled when a railway crew arrived at the scene. Shortly after, the three robbers were arrested because one of the passengers, George Kinney, identified two of the robbers. George Kinney was shot and killed before he could testify. Subsequently, the remaining passengers were also asked to testify, but for some unknown reason, they were a lot less enthusiastic to do so. Huh, wonder why? The stolen money was insured by the Adams Express Company, which hired the Pinkerton Detective Agency to track down and capture the group. From this time onwards, the Reno gang would never be able to operate without being chased by the detective agency or local law enforcement. That train had certainly left the station. After a robbery at a courthouse in Missouri, John Reno was later arrested by the Pinkerton agents and sentenced to 25 years in prison. However, this did not deter the gang from carrying out new crimes. And after multiple robberies, Frank Reno and two other members were arrested by the Pinkerton agents. However, they managed to break out of jail on April the 1st. <laughs> and that's no joke. Their second train robbery took place in December 1867. Again, leaving the Seymour Depot, the group scored a total sum of $8,000. A third train was stopped by six members of the gang. They were eager to open the express car only to find 10 armed Pinkerton agents inside. A minor setback. A shootout followed, wounding several gang members while they successfully fled the scene. The residents of Seymour were getting pissed about their stolen money, which started to be a familiar reaction to the brothers' presence wherever they went. A search group was formed, named the Jackson County Vigilante Committee, not to capture, but to kill the entire gang. With all this heat around every <laughs> track bend, the gang moved to Iowa, only to be tracked <laughs> and recaptured by the Pinkerton agents. Again, they were placed in jail, and again on April the 1st, they escaped. And again, that's no joke. Moving back to Indiana, the plan for a fourth train robbery was set up. Twelve men boarded another train, leaving a depot in Marshfield. The men overpowered the train engineer and uncoupled the passenger cars, allowing the locomotive with the remaining express car to speed away. 
After breaking into the express car, they attacked another member of the train crew. He was thrown out of the moving train at high speed, killing the poor man. I guess his attacker was just off the rails. Off the rails, get it? <laughs> okay. A large safe was forced open. The gang hit the jackpot. A total sum of 96,000 US dollars was taken. The train was stopped and the group disappeared with the money. The robbery gained national attention and the group was now wanted by the federal government. With a fifth attempt to rob a train, Pinkerton agents were again waiting in the train for an ambush and another shootout followed. The group managed to escape, but one of its members was soon arrested and was kindly asked to give the names of the other members. Soon after, two more gang members were arrested and all were moved to jail by train. Three miles outside Seymour, the train was stopped by the Jackson County Vigilante Group. They pulled the men out of the train and all three were hanged to a tree close by the tracks. Not a long time after that, three more members of the gang were arrested and moved by train to the same location. Not surprisingly, the angry mob of the Vigilante Committee was waiting to stop the train and again force the men out of the train. They used the same tree to hang the other members of the gang. By this time, more than half of the gang was already lynched by the Jackson County Vigilante Committee. An impressive track record, I must say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Moving on. On July the 27th, 1868, the Pinkerton agents captured William and Sim Reno in Indianapolis. Because of the stories of what happened to the other members, the brothers were moved to another jail. The vigilante group moved fast and invaded the vacated jail in Lexington only to find the brothers were moved to the more secure Floyd County Jail. The gang leader, Frank Reno, and one last gang member made it all the way to a border town in Canada. However, they too were arrested and extradited to the US for prosecution. Now rejoined, the three brothers and one gang member were waiting for their trials in a prison cell in New Albany, Indiana. Information about the location of the remaining members reached the vigilante group. A mob of 65 people traveled by train to New Albany. From the train station, the group stormed the Floyd County Jail and overwhelmed the police officers. Shortly after, they moved to the house of the sheriff and demanded the key to the prison cell. The sheriff said no. Apparently, that was the wrong answer, and they shot him in the arm, turning his wife into a hysterical Karen, which was more annoying than the hole in his arm. So, he passed the key, and the group left. Returning to the county jail, the door was open, and the four men were dragged into the streets. All were beaten up badly and subsequently hanged. No one has ever charged or investigated the violent lynching. Secretary of State William H. Seward wrote a formal letter of apology as a result, although the Reno brothers were not exactly in a comfortable position by now to accept said apology. Local newspapers wrote with praise about the actions of the Vigilante Committee, describing the events of the night with the phrase, Judge Lynch had spoken. Because of the chaotic scene and the quick executions of the last gang members, no one was interrogated long enough to determine where the remaining money was. Treasure hunters searched for years trying to find the scores but to no avail. Despite the money never being found, the gang made its name in the history books and became an inspiration to many would-be robbers. The street name Reno Avenue in Albany is probably inspired because of the gang and their final piece of legacy can be found at a tree site next to the train tracks in Seymour. The site is called Hangman Crossing. Ha! Ah, nice touch. Check out our new store for cool Mitzi merch, or join our Patreon community. Check out our Patreon and become a member today. <laughs>